Another new feature is this thing here, a reduced resolution playback. It's only in the workgroup version, it's not in the pro version. And it's not essential, but it's nice to have. So what is it? Well, okay, I've got a clip here, which is a 4K clip on a 4K timeline. I'm using a computer that's pretty good. It's a Skylake processor, so it should be able to cope with that. Press the play button, you can see it's playing it back quite nicely. The buffer down here is quite happily coping with that. Let's take an effect and pop it on there, because this is a GH4 clip filmed in log mode, so I'm going to get your primary color corrector, throw it on there, and choose a Panasonic LUT for it, which obviously made it look a lot nicer, but it's going to make it work harder. Can it cope with that? Oh, in this case, it's actually struggling. So I've got a quite nice computer here. It is a laptop, and it does struggle doing, as you can see, a primary color correction on a GH4 clip at full 4K. If I go to the project settings, You'll notice here that I am also in a 10-bit project because I'm trying to get the best color possible. I've got lengths or scaling. Yeah, basically I'm making this machine work as hard as it can and it can't quite cope with that. What can I do about it? Well, if you pop up to the resolution setting, you've got all these different options. So full means do it at full quality. Full 8-bit means, okay, you are in a 10-bit project, but process it at 8-bit. That's a bit easier. Can it cope with that? Mm, not quite. Okay, what if it can't cope with that? Let's drop the resolution to half. Play that. Oh yeah, it can quite happily cope with that. Now, half resolution 4K is high definition, so this is still a very good image. And I cannot tell the difference at all on this screen between half playback resolution and full playback resolution, because this is only an HD computer screen and I'm only playing it in a little window in the corner. If I was piping it out to a TV, then I would be able to tell the difference. Let's take another clip and put that on top. And all I'm gonna do is drop the same primary color corrector on that. So now I've got two doing the same thing and I'm going to take that one and shrink it down and shove it in the corner. So now what I've got is two layers of 4K at 4K with the best quality resolution and with LUTs on both of them. What happens there? I'm at half resolution. Can it cope with it? Oh, nearly. Nearly the buffer's hovering about the one or two frames, but it's just about managing it. Let's add in another track. Let's shove another clip on top of it. Put the same primary color correcting effect on it. Go into the layout for that clip. Shrink that down, so I'm now doing three layers of 4K, complete with primary color corrections and all the rest of it. Press the play button, and yeah, well, it can't cope with that, can it? Quite a big ask for any computer, really. And this is only a laptop, so let's drop the quality again. Oh, coping with that. Now I'm at a quarter resolution of 4K, so I suppose that would be 1K, really, wouldn't it? But basically, that's not as good as high def. It's about half high def resolution. But it's good enough to look at it and judge the color and get a feel of the movement of everything without having to render the footage. And that's the point. It's just a way of dropping the resolution so you can play back stuff without rendering. It does it at a source level. So if you choose to do a quarter resolution, it's actually looking at the original clip here and it's decoding that at a quarter of its original resolution. It's not just doing the effects, it's going to the original media and actually decoding that at a lower resolution. And it's just a nice thing to have because, you know, a lot of time you can get playback that's good enough to show you what's actually going on without having to render stuff. Obviously, the best thing to do with this to see it properly would be to pop it back to full and then render. But that's going to take time. If I'm putting it on full normally, and this is what would happen in the Pro version, and this is what would happen in EDIUS 7, you know, just looking at this, it's playing it back slower, which is what EDIUS always does. If EDIUS can't cope with something, it'll play it back slower and flag it up for rendering, and then what you've got to do is come up to render and then render it. I do a render and add to timeline. We'll see roughly how long this 28 seconds is going to take. Okay, it's not too bad. It's only going to take about 60 seconds to do it but it's still taking time. So it's nice to be able to drop the resolution and actually just see something. If you've dropped the resolution to something quite low and you play it, so that does look a bit fuzzy now. At an eighth resolution, you can even see the difference up here in the playback window. If I pop it up full screen and start playing, then you'll see it's dropped there quite a lot because this is an eighth of the original resolution. You'll notice when I stop, it pops up with a full resolution frame. So although you can you know, get a rough idea of what the movement's like, as soon as you stop playing it, up it'll pop, and then you'll see what it really looks like. 
there is actually a setting to turn that off. If I go into the settings and then user settings, and then under preview, you go to playback, and there's this new tick box at the bottom here, show full quality when paused. If you untick that, and then let's come out of this, start playing, stop, yeah, there you can see, when I'm paused now, it doesn't pop to a full resolution thing, but it does stop immediately. Whereas with that thing set on, you play it back, it plays back at low quality, you let go, it takes a second for it to pop up with the full quality. That's the default, that's actually what I leave it on all the time, but there is a setting to turn it off if you want to turn it off. I mean, I find a lot of the time with Edius, I don't render stuff, everything plays back in real time. But, you know, people are starting to use 4K footage and they're starting to use really hard to decode footage. So sometimes it won't play back. Uh, the other thing it's very useful for, I find, is third party effects. Because a lot of the Edius stuff plays back in real time. But if you add some new blue filters or Boris or something like that, then those don't play back in real time. And there are times when if I drop the playback resolution, I can get some playback out of them, which I won't get normally. It's a nice feature. It is in workgroup only. I say it's not essential, but it's nice to have. They have also added something in for pro users, which I can't really show you because it's a really behind the scenes thing. And that's that when EDIUS 8 Pro was first released, they said it would be limited on the number of cores that it would use. It would use about eight cores. They said specifically the workgroup version was optimized for multiple processors and the pro one wasn't. For normal systems, you probably wouldn't notice, but if you're using the Pro version on a 8-core processor or a Xeon dual-core processor, you would notice the difference. There are times when EDIUS 8 Pro wasn't using all the cores, which was how it was designed, and they did say that. Well, with 8.2, they've removed that restriction. So you can quite happily use the Pro version of EDIUS on an 8-core or a Xeon system without it slowing stuff down. They might not have given you the resolution thing, but they did add in something which they had said wasn't going to be there in the first place.